Office 2010, Calculations with Dates and Times. Okay, so we're going to have a look at how to do calculations with dates first. And here we've got a number of members of a book club again. And we've put in the date that they joined the actual club. And we're going to imagine that they're going to have a meeting on the 5th of August. And they would like to know how long people have been members of this particular club. Okay, to work this out, we're going to go to cell D3 and we're going to type in equals. And we're going to take the date of the annual meeting and we're going to deduct the date that they, or the day that they actually joined the club. Okay, and that's going to give us the number of days that they have been members of this club. So Anne has been a member for 216 days. Okay, it's important if you want to use the autofill function, just remember that cell B9 has to be an absolute cell reference. So just make that an absolute cell reference by pressing F4 on your keyboard, and that will insert your absolute cell references or little dollar signs. Okay, so let's use our autofill now to copy this down, and that will give us the days that they have been members. If you want to work out how many years they've been a member for, go back to your function put some brackets around it and now you're going to take the days and you're going to divide it by 365.25 okay so because that's how many days you have in a year okay so she would have been a member for a, for a year let's copy that down remember uh, it's probably rounded so let's just add some decimal places here okay I'm going to add two so here you'll see that she hasn't been a member for quite a year yet, it's actually 0.59. Uh, Beth has been a member for just over two years. And if you look at Ntokozo here, she's been a member for about half a year, which seems kind of right. Okay, right. Just make certain that when you're doing calculations with dates and times, that you've actually formatted the dates as date. Um, and make sure that your form formats match because it will be easier when doing your calculations. Next, we're going to move to the timesheet. And we're going to imagine that they had to do a fundraising event and uh, they had to clock in and out where they did duty at this fundraising event. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Okay, now we're going to work out how many hours they spent at the fundraising event. Okay, so we're going to type in uh, equals. I'm going to put in a bracket. You're going to take the time that they left, so your end time minus your start time. Okay, and if you press enter, you'll see that you have this colon, okay, which says 8 o'clock. So the colon means that um, the computer has now changed the format of the cell to time, and that's not really what we want. We want to know how many hours they spent there. So the first thing you have to do here is make sure that the format of your cell is correct by selecting number. Okay, now it says 0.33. Um, that doesn't really mean anything to us. So keep in mind that when you're working with hours, you have to tell the computer to multiply that with 24 because you've got 24 hours in a day. So it's your end time minus your start time multiplied by 24. Make sure the format of the cell is correct. In other words, number. And then press enter. Right, so Anne worked for eight hours. And now you can use the autofill functions to copy it down for the rest. And it will tell you how many hours the rest of the people worked on that particular day.